Hello, this is Breuer, and welcome back to an episode of our Let's Play for Farming Simulator 2019. We are continuing our second start from scratch run. This is the one on the new Woodshire farm. Um, apologize if there's been a little bit of a gap in the videos uh, with the kids going back to school and stuff like that. I've had to uh, be a bit more flexible with my schedule. I think I've got a schedule worked out now that hopefully there won't be any more gaps. Hopefully. But uh, if there are, please bear with me. Uh, I'll get through it as much as I can, and then there definitely will be more videos. I'm not, I'm not quitting or anything like that, so... Uh, I'm just trying to work through through some of the family stuff that goes on, you know, whatever, get get things rolling. But uh, yeah, here we are. Uh, I do need to get some of these workers started back up here. Let's get you going, doing the yell thing, and then let's see where's our other workers. So you're doing silage. Where are we at on the silage? I apologize. I do, like I said, it has been a couple of days since my last episode, so I'm trying, or probably more than a week now. Um. We're good okay on that. I'll probably come back to you in just a minute. You're doing your thing, so let's get you started at the end. Back there, just to make sure you are starting in the right spot. Alright, so that looks pretty good. That guy's rolling nicely. Um, you were heading back to pick up some more uh, stuff, I believe, was the plan. So we'll, whoop, we will do that if I can not run into a fence. And then... Uh, what are you doing? You are sprayer. You're that. Okay, cool. Apologize again. I'm having to refresh my mind a little bit because I actually have been playing a lot of this game offline. Uh, or not say offline, but like with my friends and stuff like that. And, um, I forget what I've done here and what I haven't done here. So, let me, uh, let me get myself reminded about a few things. Let me get this thing loaded up real quick. That's a little bit more. Although we got plenty of time, so I probably can wait on this actually. Yeah, I probably could wait on that. Let me get this thing rolling. And that will be good. So I'm not fast forwarding. I still got plenty of time to get the rest of that silage in there. But yeah, silage silage is definitely the way to go. I've done a lot more experimenting since the last episode. I've actually played, like I said, I've played this game a lot. Just kind of on my own time. Doing my own thing with some, some buddies. And um, still learning a lot more about things. Um, different animals. Different, um, different crops. Different uh, combinations of different try this try that whatever um so i'll definitely share that type of trial and error information with you guys as as i discover it quite frankly uh one a couple things i've discovered is uh i like cows i like horses i don't really like the pe uh, pig sheeps or goat or, or uh chickens i should say um uh, they're just not that much fun i mean chickens are very easy to take care of so if you just want some animals to take care of just kind of a starter animal um it's a good one to start with. It's There's not much involved in chickens, but they also don't give you much in return. So the eggs don't sell for a ton. I mean, you just really need, need a ton of chickens to get enough eggs to make it worthwhile. And even then, the eggs are... You have to manually load them into the trucks every time, which is just annoying. So, in my opinion, chickens could be good. Just not a lot of fun right now. Uh, the selling of the chickens is not worth it because there's no way to transport the chickens as far as I know. So... You buy them, or you, you can sell them for 25 but then they charge you a $15, uh, I think it is, um, transport fee for each chicken. So you only get $10 per chicken to sell them back. So if you were just going to sit there and breed them and not even worry about the eggs, it's not really worth your time. Um, and then the uh, sheep are similar. Sheep are also another one. If you just want something that's easy to take care of, not going to take you a lot of time, not, not a lot of you know major effort, um, sheep are good. But again, they don't, uh, you know, the return is the wool. And the wool, you have to load up manually and all that stuff as well with the pallet fork and things like that. And if that's fun for you, by all means, you know, there's nothing wrong with it. It's just I've discovered and I've decided that it's just not fun for me. Um, pigs. The big thing with the pigs is, I mean, they're really good at, they breed really fast, uh, which is amazing. And they give you lots of slurry and lots of manure, both of which you can sell to the biogas plant here for a lot of money so they are good in that regard but the thing with pigs is they require a lot of different crops so it's really hard to excuse me i should cut that out but i mean that's life i guess i <laughs> sneeze um here i'm talking about pigs i'm sneezing right i must be allergic to them but no but seriously the um pigs require so many so many different crops that um it can be a little hard and a little tedious to try and keep up with all of those. I might still do pigs on this farm, um, just because um, 
it would give us a little bit of variety and stuff. And I don't know that this farm's goal is just to make the most money possible and that's it. Uh, if I was going to do that, I would never do anything but silage and I would never even touch an animal. Uh, but I want to have some fun. I want to have some fun with some of the animals. It gives us some uniqueness and stuff like that. So we're definitely going to do cows. Cows are, I love cows. The milk cows and the new, I, I've got that mod for adding new cow breeds. The milk cows and like Angus for beef and stuff like that. I think they're a lot of fun. Um, they're, they're, you know, decent amount of work because you still have to mix the food and stuff like that and clean up after them and things of that nature. But the fact that you can load the milk right onto the trailer directly is obviously a huge win. And, um, the, uh, uh, and the, you know, being able to sell them back, you can get a trailer to sell them back, you know, load them up, haul them off, whatever. So I think we're definitely going to do cows. Cows are probably gonna be the first thing we're going to do. Probably going to do horses. Horses are pretty easy, actually. They're, they don't take a lot of effort if you... Uh, other than the riding. Obviously, obviously, the riding is the effort that goes into horses. And that's a pretty big effort, to be fair. Uh, if you want to do... If you want to ride your horses, I recommend if you're by yourself, just do eight horses. Eight horses is actually plenty. Honestly, maybe even four horses is plenty for a single person to ride every single day. Because it takes time. But um, I, for the sake of this add-on, or for the sake of this uh, video, I have an add-on to ride the horses for me. Hopefully it works. Uh, it's supposed to charge you to ride the horses, which I'm okay with. I'm, I'm like, you know what? Paying somebody else to ride my horses and exercise them feels realistic. So I'm going to try that add-on out, see if it works for us, uh, and see if it uh, feels like it's still you know, a fair price for saving us some, some time and effort. And if so, then we might have more than a handful of horses. We might have the full 16 or something like that. Um, what else have I discovered? Uh, a few other things, but we'll probably get to some of those as we as we get to them. I mean, there's a few things I've discovered that are later in the progress of what we're doing right now that we're just we're just not there yet. I did try out belts, a belt system for the silage over there, where I could just automatically feed from the silage as soon as it finished turning, you know, fermenting and stuff like that. It would just automatically feed into the drop up location. It works sometimes for no explainable reason. The belt will work great for you know, an hour or so, and then it'll just cut off. Or it worked great for 30 minutes and then just cut off. Or great for 15 minutes and then just cut off. Like, the times it would cut off is random. Um, and then you have to go in there and you kind of have to, like, wiggle the parts a little bit and it'll just kick right back up. So it's like, functionally, everything's set up properly for it to work properly. But for some reason, it would just kick off from time to time. I don't know if that's because of the nature of the drop-off point, the nature of the way the silos work for silage. Don't know what it is. So I have tried belts. It seems like a great idea. But probably not something we're going to be taking advantage of just because it was just, I spent hours upon hours trying to get those set up on my own. And so we're probably just going to stick with that, that Ropa, the mouse, and uh, just use that. And it's, that thing's great as well. I actually like that thing a lot. I was just trying to get, you know, a belt system figured out for one, because it exists, it's in the game. Why not try it out? And then also because, you know, give us time to do some other things if we can get that stuff automatically feeding into there. All righty, let's go drop this off. We got, what, maybe one more trailer? Maybe a little bit more than a trailer? It's hard to tell. Got that little strip up here that he missed just because of the way the fence is designed and stuff like that. When we get to the point of um, kind of figuring out how I want to lay out these fields, I will trim off a bunch of this. Uh, you'll actually see me trim off a lot of these fields because I don't like the fact that the workers just stop working, you know, for no, you know, what seems like no reason. But I guess it's because, you know, either they're too wide for a certain spot or too long to turn around in a certain spot you know it's just it's just annoying so there's certain um things where i'm just going to trim off because quite frankly the efficiency i gain from having the worker do the whole thing versus me having to go back and clean up after them is worth the loss of of, cro of crop to me i have a pretty decent amount of crop in here um so this is gonna be gonna be pretty good. Going to be pretty good. We can process eight hundred thousand uh, silage per day. I think it's the, how the math works. Um, if I've done it right, so it's about about eight hundred thousand somewhere around there. So um, anything more than that is just stuff for the next day. So the goal is to get to that eight hundred thousand mark, and then then we can use the the field for some other type of crop, you know, prepping for the cows or prepping for the pigs or something like that if we decide to do those. Um, and then we'll just rotate back to corn, you know, every other cycle or something like that to kind of keep that 800,000 stockpile uh, ready and available. So that's kind of the goal. It's the plan. We'll see how it works out. 
Uh, I do need to get a cedar started here in just a minute. As soon as I get done loading these back and forth, I will probably go grab the cedar then. Um, yeah. I mean, technically, the the harvester can drop the stuff off for us, and I don't even have to have this trailer here. But uh, we'll do at least one more trailer, and then we'll let him finish off the rest, because I think the rest would be just basically one trailer left of what's there. And then we'll use this, uh, this class to go... Uh, what are you doing? Ah, uh, see, this is kind of what I'm talking about. They get very confused. And they start doing some weird stuff. Um... Oh, here's one thing I am going to do. I am going to turn off crop destruction. Where is it at? Uh, I think crop destruction is great. It's fine. It makes sense. It's realistic, obviously. But I also think it's not... I mean, the, the, the workers don't destroy crops. And so sometimes they get themselves into positions where I'm having to rescue them. And it seems a little silly for me to have to destroy my crops to rescue a worker who got himself into position because he can't destroy crops. Like, you know what I mean? So, I, I just, crop destruction's fine. I get it. If you want to turn it on for your own realism benefits, cool. I don't think it necessarily takes away from the game to turn it off because it just means instead of having to go around on the road, I can sometimes cut through a field. Okay, so I saved myself 10 seconds and it's a little bit of quality of life. I don't think it really takes away from the fact that I'm still having to grow crops and harvest crops and things like that. So, for me, I am okay with that level of realism reduction, but uh, your mileage may vary, and that's okay. Oh, come on, dude. I mean, I know you're getting it at, like a third of the crop right now because of the fact that you are. In fact, I'm gonna have to jump over to you and take over manually here in just a moment because you are silly and will not do it yourself. Let's see how far will you go? You went up a little bit further than I thought you would. Oh, there you go. There you stopped because reasons. All right, turn it on. Let's just cut through here. Let's see if we can trim off this little bit. Fill up this. We might. Well, we have enough to fill up. Anything more than there's just this one? Actually, we might not. Uh, this may be all we can do. We'll turn around here. This thing's got pretty good turn radius because of the way it. Uh, pivots, but I don't know if I can turn around. I think I should have gone up a little bit farther, which is probably his problem. He understands that he can't turn around. Here I am trying to turn around. And he's like, dude, uh, that's why I didn't do that, man. You, uh, you, you look foolish now. And I was trying not to look foolish myself. That's why I didn't cut, cut through there. It's all right. Like I said, we'll, we'll make a little bit of a gap there. Uh, probably put like a road through there or something like that. Just kind of make it look cool. We'll figure it all out. Oh, oh, is he going to cut into my crop? I think. Uh... Oh, it's close. Let me jump over to him anyway. Uh, he's not going to cut into our crop, but he is going to block me from getting up there. So let me back him up. We'll let him finish in just a moment. Good little worker. You did good. Nothing wrong with you. And then we'll, uh, we'll finish this off real quick. Yeah, we'll have, I think we'll have one trailer and then just a tiny bit left over after that, so it's all good. Maybe, we'll see. It's hard to tell sometimes. It's hard to kind of gauge it, to be fair. Um, let me see, what's the, how the fill's looking? We don't need any lime or anything, right? I didn't miss that. Uh, just plowing it up. Uh, oh, wow, look, there's cotton up there on 24. Definitely want to buy all these fields. Oh, I forgot we bought 28. Oh, yeah, so we do have that one. I knew I was thinking about buying it, but I forgot I had actually bought it already. Uh, what's the stage? Uh, it is one stage away from being able to harvest with this thing, so that's good. We'll get there soon enough. Alright, I'm going to get you out of the way and let me jump over to you. Get you started finishing up here a little bit. Go 
little thing, sir. And let's go finish this up down here. Ninety nine, one hundred. All right, there we go. We'll drop you off here. Bring the other trailer up. Wish I could automate you to finish this off for me. Oh, you're gonna get stuck, aren't you? Good job, dude. Good job. Yet another reason why we're probably gonna want to trim off some of this stuff. So there's like certain trees that they don't. I don't want them running through all that stuff. We'll get there. I mean, I could trim it off right now, but I'm just not ready to to do all that just yet, I don't think. Actually, I might. I mean, we're going to have plenty of silage. Let me see how much silage we have. I think we're going to have plenty um, to make you know a ridiculous amount of money, to be honest. Uh, I'll do the math here in just a minute once we get over there. And you guys will see how lucrative silage can be and we may go ahead and do some cosmetic work to these fields here although if i was going to do that i would really like to make sure i bought those fields over there because i kind of want to join some of these fields with those um let me get you out of the way first and um oh, get you lined up properly so i may wait until tomorrow like the, the, the new day when we get our silage profits and then do do uh do some buy-in as well as some uh some stuff so we may see that uh let's come back over to you One other thing is I might uh, reconfigure our silage, uh, our bunker silos, I should say, um, because I've learned some stuff about how those bunker silos work a little bit, and there's a few kind of goofy aspects of them. It's fine. I mean, it's a video game. It's nothing. Nothing's perfect. It's all good. But there's a few kind of goofy uh, aspects of the bunker silos that I would like to uh, try and clean up a little bit, and I'll show you. I'll talk about that here in a minute once I get up there. Uh oh. Our plow dude's about to get run run into that thing. Let me get this finished real quick, and then I will go fix that. I'm almost done, buddy. Or can you squeeze past it? I don't think you can squeeze past it, can you? Nope. Oh, he tried. Oh, he did squeeze past there. He scratched my paint, though. All right. Let's jump over to that guy, get him out of the way. He's actually not in the way by much. He almost made it. Oh, it's gonna be hard, isn't it? Uh, we did it. Yeah, I know I've already plowed all this, but I haven't seeded it yet, so I think it's a good time to to make a few modifications. We should have enough money for that as well. Okay, so the thing about these bunker silos is I love the way these d doubles w look. These are great looking silos. There's nothing wrong with them. And you can use them. There's no, they're, they're definitely 100% usable. You know, if it's something that you like the way it looks, I recommend it. There's no, that's fine. But what I've discovered is that sometimes when you put a decent amount of, of chaff in here or, you know, have a decent amount of silage, it can bleed through to the bunker next to it uh, in a weird way, uh, which means that, like, it could get to a point where I can't put chaff and this one on the right, because of the one on the left, some of the silage bled through, and then I, but I can't pick it up because I have to clean out the one on the left, you know, the, the one that has silage in it's, you know, stuff before I'm able to clean it up, and, um, and so that's a little annoying. So what I've discovered and what I've 
I've learned, and we'll, we'll reconfigure it um, later. It's going to have to be... I'll have to see. I'll have to figure out how I, how I can do it, because I have to get those emptied out, obviously. But, but what I've discovered is um, that if you, uh, if you use singles and put a little space between them, then um, it can still look okay. Um, but it also doesn't ha it doesn't seem to as far as I could tell. I mean, I haven't I haven't played with the singles as, as long as far as I could tell It does not have the same bleed through uh, Issues so a little bit of word of advice about uh, those double bunker silos In fact what I may do here in a minute is put a single up next to those when we need to put some more chaff down um, as a as a new new spot to drop, and then once we clean those other ones out, we'll uh, we'll delete them and uh, make those singles as well. Okay, got a few things I need to do right now. I need to get um, obviously this stuff smushed down, fermenting. Uh, oh, my stuff. Oh, come on. Don't get stuck. There we go. And to get the stuff smushed down fermenting, I also need to get the cedar going, things like that. Of all of those options, getting the stuff smushed down fermenting is the one that's the most profitable because, you know, the chaff is, or the silo, silage is so profitable. I mean, obviously getting the seed started is good as well, and I can get that started. Actually, if I go ahead and fix the fields. Okay, let's do that. If I fix the fields, then I can trust the um, worker to do his automated stuff and then we can seed without too much fear. So to fix the fields a little bit more, we'll go back to the landscaping. And you've seen me do this already for the bottom down there um, where I trimmed up from the bottom. I might even have to trim this up a little bit more. It's hard to tell sometimes different ones have different issues it seems. But what I'm going to do is, uh, I mean this over here on the left side should be fine for now. I will fix it eventually. Probably what I'm going to do is probably expand this this field that I'm on width-wise just a bit more and have a road coming out from the the house right here going straight up. So I'll probably, because it's still a bit more convenient just to come straight out that road, come straight up the field. So I'll probably expand that one over, kind of shift this road over a little bit and then have another field that's a sim similar width over here on the left-hand side. So that would be the goal for that part. For this part over here, uh, what I want to do is, I think I've discovered, let me see, what was it? Was it like a width of... Eight or ten. I think it's a width of ten from the road itself, but I can't obviously paint from the road itself. So then I think it becomes a width of, you know, what is it like? Eight. I can scooch over a little bit, like a six. Can I do that? Of course I don't, because I don't own the land. Look at this. The entire square is on the field that I have, but somehow it says I don't own the land. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to use a four from right here, and we're just going to trim this all the way up. Um, because reasons. Uh, there's the grass that I want. So we'll just trim this all the way up. Give it, give it a little bit of space to turn around, a little bit of space to kind of path over here, and I think it'll look much better. Uh, as for the stuff that you see, the the, the current field that you're seeing, um, I will have to fix that with a, a thing that deletes fields, and we'll do that here in a little bit. Oh, here we go. From here, I can start actually deleting this normally, which is so funny. It's such a weird... That's the thing. Uh, I guess it's because of this road here. It's saying that I don't own that road. Which is a little, you know, I get it, but a little silly. We'll just trim this field off. Yes, am I losing a lot of crop here? Sure, but am I gaining a lot of efficiency? I think so, because the workers are not going to be quite as silly. On some of these edges and things like that, they'll have a little bit more space to be a little bit, you know, wider than the field, a little bit of a little bit of cushion. And I think it's going to be just fine. And then I will do the same kind of thing up here by the fence, and you will see that I'll go ahead and cut off the field up here. If you've never used the landscaping stuff, I think it's really cool. Uh, there's a lot of power with the landscaping you can you can do. That's all done. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to full 20. 20 seems to be a pretty safe kind of length for tractors to turn around. Uh, we'll go to about 20. We'll do it from here. That's going to be okay. 
And we'll just cut off the field here. So really kind of what I did was I took field 22, which is the big field, and 20A1, which is the small field, and shifted 22 down. to. And so my big field is now south of me, and I have a tiny field up here that I can still probably put a little bit of corn on if I want to. Uh, probably what I will do just temporarily is, let's see, okay, let's do like a 10 here. I think that'll be uh, do from right here. So we'll just trim this off. Make sure I just have some, some cushion. I'm probably going to put my cows up here, quite frankly. Uh, I think that's going to be the plan. It's a good spot. I'm not really going to use this tiny field for much else. Plus, it's got some nice roads. It's next to the... Um, Apparently, I'm allergic to animals because every time I talk about them, I sneeze. Uh, it's next to the biogas, so when I get the manure, it'll be easy to drop off. So there we go. We're gonna have two size, two different size fields. Oh look, even the worker here. Oh, he's, he's he stopped because of. Well, actually, he stopped for. Why did you stop? See, even here, he has trouble. Why are you having trouble right there? It's kind of annoying, if I must be honest. I mean, I get that he's trying to turn around. I get, I can see that part, but he should not be stopping. He should still be doing his thing right now. Why are you not doing your thing, buddy? Eh, we'll figure it out later. He'll kick off here in a minute, finish that last little strip, and then I'll bring him back up here to finish this. Uh, let, now we can go ahead and go get the cedar, because I feel safe to seed at this point. Um, so cedars. I don't have one yet, do I? I don't remember if I've actually bought one on this farm. Because, again, I've been playing a lot of other farm stuff. Uh, do, 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 do. Got the lights, got all that stuff. That's all the stuff we have currently to bought. Least items. We do have a cedar. Okay, good. Good, good, good. Uh, the horse. Where is the horse? Is that this down here? Nope, that's my Tetra. Is it up here? Oh, it's over there. I see it now. Behind the behind the, the silo. I kind of forgot what it looked like because I switched from the horse to a different one on my other map. And it uh, it's a different color. So I forgot what color the, the cedar was on here temporarily. Since I'm not ready for cows yet, I will still put some corn on this field for now. Which may make you wonder, why did you bother cutting in half? It's like, well, because for one, we got plenty of corn. We're going to be fine. But also, I kind of want to get my plan kind of in progress. Kind of keep that in mind. Kind of get it set up. Start slowly sketching out kind of what, what we want the farm to look like. And uh, let you guys see my vision, so to speak. And uh, so that's kind of part of the reason to cut that off. I will make that field wider at some point. Again, is that's the plan to move this, this road right here over to the right just a little bit more not a lot but a little bit which will give us some of that crop kind of yield back so to speak um all right go work go oh i should have started him over by the fence actually that's all right we'll start here no big deal but uh, normally i like to start by the fence and work my way away from the the obstacle but uh, this will be fine uh and then real quick let's go trim off a little let's see he's still having trouble i may have to trim off a couple more feet here We'll figure it out. Again, I could do all this myself if I wanted to, but the whole point is to have these workers help me as much as possible. Let me do the things that the workers can't do, like managing the silage, and let them handle a lot of this kind of tedious stuff. All as well. I mean, I don't mind doing a little bit here and there, but rather try and trim off just enough to make sure that I don't, I can do this as little as possible, so to speak. I guess what it comes down to is I want to choose to take over for the worker and not be forced to take over from the worker, if that makes any sense.
I know for a fact that this field, even when it's trimmed off and, and kind of restructured a little bit, will give us plenty of crop for making tons of money. So I'm not remotely worried about the yields. I've, I've very intimately experienced with the yields, and you guys will discover as we go how much yield this actually can give us, which is a crazy amount. So we'll get there. I'll just put this thing over here for now. In fact, I was actually, that was one thing I was going to do, wasn't it? Which we will check here in just a second once I start rolling out that other stuff. We will see how much, um, how much yields we've got. There we go. Let's grab our wheelie thing. And uh, that'll help us smush it down quicker. So we have, um, in this one silo right here, we have 540000 We get $900 per thousand. So that comes out to what? Um, about just a little bit shy of $500,000 worth of stuff here. $500,000 worth of stuff here. That's a lot. So, like I said, we're fine. The fact that I'm trimming off those fields, not a problem. Now, and, and the other side of the reason why it's not a problem to trim off those fields is because we all are going to get plenty of money, but also we can only, like I said, we go back to that thing where we can only put in 800000 per day, um, which does mean that we are capped a bit on how much we can actually do. So it's all going to work out. Just you guys wait and see. And... Uh, Get all this smushed down properly. Let's check the silage we have currently. Make sure it's. It looks like it's a little bit low. Definitely need to fill it up a little bit here in a minute. Oh, helper I has completed their task, huh? Why do I have a feeling they missed a few spots? All right, well, we're going to put a cut in here. I'm going to keep working on this compacting, and uh, we'll come back in just a little bit. So I do appreciate you guys watching. May God bless you, and I hope you join me again next time. Thank you, and goodbye.